Thanks so much for stopping by. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to build this awesome little chicken coop and run. Now, the size it is right now, it's perfect for about 10 chickens, but you can scale this thing up or down to fit your needs. A lot of thought went into designing this thing. I have a lot of features that make access in the nesting boxes and getting eggs and cleaning it out really easy. Did you just lay that? <laughs> Also cleaning the coop itself out with the double doors, I came up with this really cool slanted droppings board and roost that has made it really, really easy to clean and maintains a lot of room inside that coop. I also designed it to look really attractive, but be easy enough to build for beginners to tackle it and super, super strong so that it's gonna last many, many years. If you wanna know more about those decisions on why we designed it the way we did, I have a dedicated walkthrough video over on my website along with plans. There'll be links to that down in the description. And if you wanna to subscribe to the channel, I'll be posting that video, that walkthrough video in about a week on there. So without further ado, let's jump right into building this bad boy. And I first wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring the video. Let's get started. I'm gonna start with pressure treated four by fours for each corner post. I'll use pressure treated lumber for any board that's gonna to touch the ground, but the rest will be left untreated. I integrate the four by fours all the way through the coop, making this thing super rigid and strong. I use my circular saw to cut as deep as I can, and then I'll just use my Japanese pole saw to finish cutting all the way through. Then I'll start cutting some two by fours that I'll use to connect the post together to create the main frame of the coop. Again, I'm gonna use a pressure treated two x four for the bottom piece, and I'll be nailing that to the inside. I'm doing that to allow both toll room when you're leaning into the coop doing work, as well as room for a wheelbarrow wheel to get up nice and close and tuck under that door opening for easy cleaning. I make sure everything is square and tack nail pieces into place with my framing nailer, which provides a really nice instant hold, but I'll also add exterior grade screws in places where I can for additional strength. Once both sides are done, I can connect them together and start building in the floor. I attach a treated piece along the bottom back, but I'm not gonna attach one to the front. The bottom pieces add rigidity, but really they're there to attach the hardware cloth to. If you're not familiar with hardware cloth, it's a heavy duty wire mesh that's better than chicken wire, and it keeps out predators really well. You'll see me attach that later on. The front of the coop's gonna lead into the chicken run, so that's why I don't need that two x four there to attach hardware cloth to. Once the floor framing is done, I can cut my plywood to size and screw it into place. Now the height of this coop is a little bit higher than most of the raised coops that I see being made, and I did this for a few very specific reasons. First, it's just high enough for me to get a wheelbarrow up and underneath that front edge, which allows me to easily scrape out the flooring or bedding material right into the wheelbarrow. And it's also the right height for even a shorter person to comfortably lean in, hinging at the hips and access the inside of the coop. It's also tall enough to still be able to crawl underneath to comfortably clean out from under the coop or get a bird that's trying to hide from you. All right, so. Building these wall frames, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a, a bottom plate running along the bottom and a top plate running along the top. And I'm gonna have studs running in between. And I'm gonna do a stud in the corner and then at two feet on center. And then the other one in that corner. I'm doing that to line up my studs with the seam of the T111 siding. I measured out where all the eight inch increments are. And uh, then I can have my door centered, here centered. There won't be any studs in the way here. And it'll look really nice. The one tricky part, because it's a pitched roof, is on the top, top plate there, I'm gonna have to rip one edge at that angle. And I'm gonna use my table saw for that. You can use a circular saw and make that work. Using my table saw, I'll cut the angle for the top plate and then cut all my studs to length and just work my way around cutting and assembling the wall frames as I go. While I do that, I wanna stop and share a little bit about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Hey, quiet down, quiet down you. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. I sure wish I knew about Skillshare back when I first started because even though I was skilled at making things, there was a ton I needed to learn about running a successful YouTube channel, including video, audio, editing, marketing, understanding analytics, and about a hundred other things. Well, Skillshare has all of those types of classes all in one place, and they are really high quality classes put out by experts. 
Even though I've been doing this for a long time now, I still have a lot to learn and a lot to improve upon, and so I continue to take classes on Skillshare to keep me up to date, motivated, and inspired. I just finished a class by MKBHD called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and so Edit. This is going to be what our typical shoot style looks like. You've seen, you know, this is the setup, the, the camera's in front of me. I will literally have the notes right in front of me, like, on my lap. My wife is also starting to watch some of these classes so that she can now help me with the business as well. Skillshare is going to be giving away one month free to the first thousand viewers who want to go check that out. There's a link to that down in the description. So thanks again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Now the side with the door is not going to have a bottom plate because I want to easily be able to scoop out the coupe. So I'm just going to toenail those studs into place. I then add the studs above the door that are going to frame out the little window that goes there. And then I realized that I don't want the full length stud running along the right side of the door opening. So I cut that out. The back of the coupe has an inner taller frame that again is framed for the window openings and that inner wall also makes up the front edge of the nesting boxes. Once the inner frame is done, I can tie in the framing for the nesting boxes. These also don't have a bottom plate which will allow me to easily clean out and scoop out that nesting material. I space the studs to give me the proper size nesting boxes and I will screw plywood dividers to those studs later on. Now that my framing is done, I can now attach the T111 plywood siding. I like the T111 with the 8 inch groove spacing and I always make sure that I line up any overlapping seams with a stud. that cut at an angle. The two horizontal two by fours that this gets screwed to were also cut with that same angle. For the window openings, I just add a couple screws to the plywood to temporarily hold it in place. Then I mark out the opening with a pencil and cut it out on the ground. I use a two inch piece of hard insulation foam to cut that out and it works really nice. The bottom edge of these window pieces also has that same angle cut in them so that it butts up nice and tight to the nesting box roof for a good fit that will ensure proper water runoff. I then centered and laid out the opening for my coupe door. This may be different depending on what door you use, but we went with this light sensing auto open and close one and we really like it so far. I'll actually leave a link to that as well as the windows and even all the tools I use, pretty much anything that you might want information on down in the description. Now I can move on to framing the roof and the run. Again, I'm gonna use pressure treated lumber for the bottom of the run walls. I am gonna be using three foot spacing on my 12 foot long run and adding angled bracing to add rigidity against racking. With a 12 foot long run and the roof pitch angle that I'm using, a six foot tall person can comfortably walk in the far end of that run. If you wanna make it longer, you give the chickens more room, but just remember that it will slowly start getting shorter and shorter, which isn't a huge deal because you're not really in the back corners of that run very often. I make a door that is an inch shorter and narrower than the opening, and then I'll add these horizontal nailers all the way across all my walls so that I'll have a place to secure and overlap the four foot tall hardware cloth that I'll use to enclose the run. Using a half lap joint, I make an X that I'm gonna secure inside the door. This is gonna help prevent the door from sagging over time. Now that all my pieces are made, I can play with my tractor a little bit and take them outside ready for painting and assembly. I did have the luxury of space in my shop to build this, but this can 100% be built outside right where you plan on putting the coop. You're just gonna wanna make sure you prep the ground and make sure that it's nice and level and flat first. I prepped our location by raising the ground a little bit because we get kind of wet there in the springtime. Then I also added three to four inches of sand. Sand makes a great material for the bottom of a run for a number of reasons. All 
All right, so we have the coop outside. It's time to paint it. I already pre-primed and painted all my trim pieces. I'm using this Valspar exterior primer and sealer on everything, uh, including the trim. I've used a lot of Valspar, I really like it. And for the outer coat, I'm using Duramax. This is the barn red that I'll be painting the chicken coop. And then I have white for the trim, only needed a little bit. And then for the bottom of the coop, because we're gonna be raking a bunch of the sand, we're gonna use sand in the bottom of it and you know to rake out the poop and clean up the poop and everything like that. I'm using an actual porch type of paint. It's kind of fortified with like a polyethylene or uh, yeah, polyethylene and it makes it more durable, scratch resistance than like a latex paint. So the floor will be really, really durable. That's what we're using there. Um, and I'm gonna just take all the trim outside over to the uh, chicken coop and I'm gonna use just old Japanese saw. I use a lot of Japanese saws in my woodworking. I have an older one. I'm gonna use this to cut all the trim right out there. It's actually really fast, kind of lazy. Don't really feel like dragging the miter saw all the way out there. This pine cuts really easy. So I can just mark out and lay out right there next to it, cut it with this and uh, we'll start throwing the trim up after it's done painting. So let's get out there. Before I put the trim up, I first need to install my windows. I found these windows on Amazon and they're really affordable little shed windows and they work really well. Again, I have links to those down in the description. I'm gonna use a small window above the door and two slightly larger windows in the back. Having windows on two different walls really is gonna help with ventilation and light. I decided to install metal roofs for the coop and run, which was super easy and they look great. Then I can move on to the trim. Like I mentioned before, I just cut these pieces with a pole saw. I used four inch, three inch, and two inch trim in certain places. And I use a 16 gauge brad nailer to secure the trim. I made the doors while they're on some saw horses and my wife will hold those in place while I shim them and get them centered so I can add my hinges and handles. I'll do the same process and attach the nesting box door. The last piece for the coop is the automatic coop door. This is a must have if you ask me. It senses light outside and automatically closes at night and opens in the morning so I don't have to go out there and do that. Now I can move on to finishing the run. I'm using a four foot tall hardboard cloth that I stretch out across the wall frames and I staple them to the frame using a half inch pneumatic nailer. I trim the excess off with this handy little cutoff tool, but you can use an angle grinder or wire cutters as well. I then move the walls in place and screw them together and then to the side of the coop. I didn't secure the walls to the ground with long stakes or rebar or anything, which you could do if you wanted. I did end up adding large rocks around the perimeter later, which helped hold it down. And since it's been up, we've had some pretty serious high wind storms and it didn't move an inch, so I feel really confident the way it is. Now on to the run's roof. I ended up making the run a couple feet wider than the coop to give the chickens all the extra space I could. They free range in their little fenced in yard that I made, but in the winter time, they don't like to go in the snow, so I wanted to give them plenty of space. Eight foot wide is about as wide as I would recommend going with two x four Raptors. The sheet metal is really light, but you have to be careful with snow load if you live in Northern climates. If you get a lot of snow, you might wanna jump up to two by sixes and just make sure that you pull the snow off the roof before it gets too deep. When designing this coop, I came up with this angled roost and droppings board idea, which allows for full double doors and easy access to the coop. It gives the chickens plenty of space to sleep, keeps the coop floor really nice and clean, and makes cleaning incredibly easy. So one of the coolest things about this coop is this droppings board idea that I came up with, and I wanted to show you real quick how well it works. So as you can see, I made it at an angle, which keeps the front of this open. You can have two doors here. If you run your roofs and your droppings board this way, usually it'll be blocking this wall a little bit so you can only have one door and you can't quite get in. But I can open everything up beautifully here. And I'm gonna show you how well the droppings board works. First of all, we sprinkle that sweet PDZ on top of the droppings board, which acts as like kind of a kitty litter. And something we didn't realize is that the little tool that I made kind of skates right on top of it and leaves all the unused sweet PDZ on there. So it's a lot less waste than I originally thought would be. But I'll show you how easy it works. I just made this little scrap piece of plywood 
um, glued it and screwed it to a scrap piece of wood. I was gonna make something better, but this actually has worked really well. Just a piece of the scrap of the T111. And you basically just reach in there, drop it onto the board and pull towards you. And the poop dries and floats on top of that sweet PVZ. And just bring it in and it drops right into a bucket, which I made the proper height that can sit right underneath there. And it leaves most of the sweet PVZ behind. So it's not really wasteful. And that way you don't have all that poop that happens during the night on the actual ground. And it doesn't stink at all. And we've had this for about three months like this. And it's a really, really good system. I don't have any complaints about it and wouldn't change anything. And there you have it. Inside the coop, we're gonna put a layer of Sweet PDZ down, which is an amazing odor and moisture control product. Then we're gonna add two inches of sand on top of that. I know there are a few methods out there like the deep litter method that a lot of people like, and you can modify this coop and use that, but we personally prefer using sand and a droppings board. And I'll go into more detail on that in that walkthrough video. The final thing is to screen in under the coop with hardware cloth so that they can utilize that space. And then I'll add a 12 inch piece of hardware cloth down all the way around the bottom of the perimeter. I'll bury that in the ground and then add those rocks around the edge to prevent critters from being able to dig their way into the run and coop. Well, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned some stuff. I hope you make this coop yourself. There's links again to the plans down in the description. We'll see you next time.